I think it might be a good idea to uh, have a frank discussion on why council created the mandatory connection bylaw. Uh, why is the city forcing residents to take services they don't necessarily want or even need, like water? Yeah, water and wastewater is uh, is a tough connection process. I mean, back in two thousand and four, I believe this mandatory connection bylaw was put through. Uh, it was never enforced at that time. Uh, the rationale, and most municipalities do it across the, across the province, the, the rationale is that wherever there's waste water and wastewater, one or the other, not necessarily both, is available in front of your home, you are obligated under a mandatory connection bylaw to hook up to that. That's the only way we can help pay for the system. If people have a choice, you know, I don't want to hook up to city water, I want to, I want to be on a well, then we're running this infrastructure and by legislation, we're only allowed to build the people uh, who are users of the system uh, for those water and wastewater costs. And it's not just the user rates, it's the infrastructure costs that, that, you know, to lay the pipe, to get it in the ground that has to be paid for. Everybody knows our water and wastewater rates aren't the lowest in the country, um, you know, and it's a struggle for some people. So it's important that we have a mandatory connect bylaw in place, as does every other municipality, that when residents have that service in front of their home, they are obligated to hook up to it. It's very, very important to pay for that infrastructure. So are you saying that in other municipalities there isn't the option that every, every municipality has to draw the line somewhere? Every municipality has a mandatory connection bylaw that if water and wastewater is available in front of your home, you are obligated to hook up to it. It's the only way you can afford to pay for services. If there's no water and wastewater anywhere near your house or you live in the country, there's no mandatory connect bylaw for you to hook up. And I think there's a little bit of confusion about that. We've had some calls from people who think that I'm on a well and a septic. I live out in, you know, out in the country on a country road. Are you saying I have to hook up to this service? No. There's 134 homes currently in the city of Kawartha Lakes who have a water or a wastewater and or system in front of their home that are being forced to hook up to this system. Now, what council did, they took, a, took an option and said, most municipalities are making them hook up right away. And that was the idea, you know, you, you, you pay for the services to hook up to the water and wastewater and you're, you're on the system. Council looked at the financial implications on some of our residents and we chose to say, you don't have to, you got to hook up uh, as part of the mandatory connection bylaw, but you don't have to hook up until your current system fails. So instead of, you know, if you're on a septic or a well and your septic fails, Instead of putting a new septic system in, that's the time we're going to ask you to hook up to these, this obligated system that's in front of your home. In the meantime, you got to pay the fixed costs of the infrastructure that are in front of your home because that's what all the other residents are paying. So I know the question comes up about, well, I'm not using it. Why would I have to pay for it? Um, you know, it, it's an argument we can have. We could have made everybody hook up right away and then you would be using it and then you would be paying for it. We tried to cut, you know, some of the residents a little bit of a break and say, you know what, when your system fails, that might be 10 years from now. But in the meantime, you're still going to have to pitch in and pay some of the infrastructure costs. It's the only way we can afford to provide safe drinking water to all our residents in the city. Now, what if, the, what if I have a house just outside of town and the city or, or the town grows toward my house and then it ends up being there? Yeah, you would be. Yeah, it you, would be yes, you would be today. mandatory to hook up. Um, yeah. We don't usually expand a water and wastewater system unless there's a subdivision, right. or you know, in that case, the developer pays for that and they hook it up. But the residents who are on that system or in front of that system that goes past their house at that time would be obligated to hook up to the system. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just it's one of those things that it's it's not real popular. You know, I, I grasp that. There's some people who feel I shouldn't have to pay for a service I don't use. But we have residents in Lindsay who pay for transit, whether they use it or not, and they pay for it because it's a system that's available to them. Mm -hmm. And it's not a, a, you know, I'm using it so I'm paying to get on the bus. It goes on everybody's tax bill. We can't put these water and wastewater infrastructure costs on the tax bills across the municipality. Some people have suggested that. I, I was just going to ask We're not that, legislatively yeah. allowed to do that. Uh, it has to go on the users of the water and wastewater system. And there's about 14,000 of those across the municipality. Mm -hmm. So we just, we simply can't do that. You don't want to do that either, Roderick, because we have a lot of people on a well and a septic. Can you imagine if, if we're going to put all the costs onto the taxpayer, then when I put a septic system in by living in the country, shouldn't that go on the tax bills as well, instead of me having to pay for it? Mm -hmm. So there's a trade-off, you know, people who are on a, a water and wastewater system are paying for that safe drinking water people in a very rural area are paying for their own services. Um, but, you know, those who are just sort of caught a little bit, I'll say, and, and it's a good term, 
uh, have to pay um, to hook up. And, and unfortunately, that's just the way the system works, and that's what we're. That's why we put the mandatory Connect by in place. And there's only 134 of these. Uh, there's of these 134, homes. yeah, and there's about 500 vacant properties currently within the city of Kawartha Lakes that are waiting to be developed, whether they're vacant lots or vacant areas that can be developed, that can be hooked into the system, so that when they go to build a house, you know, on that vacant lot, they'll be obligated to hook up to the system right now. But because it's vacant and there's no building on it. We're not billing them for anything. We're just saying that when you do go to build a home or a business on that lot, because the water and wastewater is available to you out front, that mandatory connect bylaw makes it mandatory that you actually hook up to it. Hmm. Okay, what are some of the, uh, uh, I guess the myths that you've heard about this issue that uh, just isn't the case? Um, I haven't heard a whole lot of myths. Um, you know, it's, it's some, some people are saying, you know, it should be put over the taxpayer. Why should I have to pay for it? I'm not using it. and. You know, I, I, I understand that frustration. I mean, I really do. I mean, I, I probably feel the same way, but councils tried to be fair. I mean, the first crack at this was, let's make everybody hook up within six months, right? And some of these are gonna cost $20,000 for them to hook up. So we would have put, we had a finance plan in place where we would help them finance it. And then we said, you know what? That's not fair. Cause we had residents calling us saying, I've just put in a new septic system. So, you know, I just spent 20000 on a septic system. So we're saying, okay, why don't we say that you got to hook up, but when your current system fails. So if you've just put a new one in, we're not going to bother you for 20 years. But you still have to pay that infrastructure cost because that's in front of your house. That's uh, available to you if you choose to use it. Like yeah. the bus. Like the bus, right? right? And the bus is a good example. Um, some people say fire. You know, you pay for that service, but not everybody uses it. Hopefully you don't ever need it, um, you know, but there are always examples out in, out in the community of things that we pay for because we have access to them. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that we're going to use them and only the people who have access to the water or, and or wastewater systems are the ones being told they have to pay that, uh, that fixed cost for infrastructure.